This is really the core of your business if you can get this right and make your, your life a lot easier. So it's really who you serve so you can make all the money you want in the world um, and make it really simple. So here's what it, this is. It's like figure out what your superpower is. So you have to figure out what it is that you love to do and what you're good at that will start attracting your perfect client, right? Um, what are you really good at? What is the one thing that can bring you the biggest check? And if you, know, you look at how's the, who, what's the stuff that I love to do and what's the biggest check that I can get doing the stuff that I love to do. So this is one of them for me, right? This brings me the biggest check because if I did this every single weekend, I could make a whole lo lot of money doing exactly what I love to do and there's really not a lot of preparation involved. I just bring this brain to the thing, right? And do what I do best. So this is a big check for me. Now, do I wanna do it every single week? I don't know, right? So it's just like, what do you do best and what can bring you the biggest check? What are your money goals and actions? So this is why I told you about the 12 week. What do you want to do? And that re that's really the important things. What are your money goals? How are you gonna get there? What's the biggest check? And what do you love to do? Because most of us, you know, I always say all of us, if at some point we look at what's the easiest thing to do, but not in terms of the easiest and funnest things, but just what's the fastest way I can make some money right now. And sometimes we need to be there, but I think a lot of, we spend a lot of, we spend too much time there a lot of, in a lot of our lives because we're our backs up against the wall because of all this stuff that we've been talking about today, you know, beliefs and whatever it is, right? So how to get everything you want is really who is your ideal mar uh, market and what is your product about? So what is your product? Who is your ideal market? What's your price? Um, how much does it cost to acquire a customer and what's the long-term value of the customer, okay? You don't have to fill all this stuff out now. Where do you find these customers and what are the conversions that you need to get? So these are really the components of the business that you need to understand. But long-time value is different from lifetime value because we don't know what the lifetime value of a customer is because if the lifetime value of the customer, if you know that, he's dead. His life is over. It's like long-term. That's why when you asked me, I said, okay, the long-term for this coaching is 18 months. So then I can figure out, well, if it's $1,000, that's $18,000 that that customer is worth to me, yeah. right? And then I can go, okay, well, now I know I can, I'm going to make $18,000 from this customer. I'm willing to spend $10,000 to get them, let's say, whatever. So that's why this is important to understand how long is your stick rate, at least for me, in terms of what I'm doing. So you're not focusing on the profit, per se, when you're calculating what the, because you're looking at the overall revenue, then looking at what the operating cost to get that customer in, right? So you just said 18,000, but it cost you 10 to get them. So you're making a profit of eight from the right. right? If, if that was the case, if, I would never do that, but sure. Okay. In that context, yes, if I'm willing to get an $18,000 customer and pay 10 to get them, I would do it all day long. If, if it was another product, like if it, if it was like an $18,000 coaching day that, that Frank does, which is, which is true, he does in a, a $25,000 a day, okay? If he's gonna spend 20 to get 25 in, why not do it? Or 15 to get 25 in, right? You never thought of it from that perspective. Yeah, man. See, that's why you have to understand the lifetime or long time value of a customer. Very, very important. I look at one of the top performing guys that I've worked with for the years, the, the industry adage is like, you deal with him, he'll take care of you. And he knows, and he does it really well. Give him a mortgage, guess what, you got courtside seats to the Raptors game. But, he gets you for life now as a customer, right, and he's, and he's known for that. Like, I was talking to him, he's like, yeah, I, when you see him, tell me he owes me my, my courtside tickets for the game. Right. And that's just, but I guess he factors that in because he knows I'm going to make 10,000 bucks, right. 20,000 over five deals with this guy. Set of courtside seats for 500 bucks. Are you kidding me? Right. So he factors all of those in. Now, not every person is going to stay with him or do five mortgages yeah. or whatever, but he averages it out. Yeah. So this is why you got to do the research. And that's why people hate all this stuff. They're going, ah, I don't know. It doesn't all work. Be, but once you get the data, once you've been doing this on Facebook or whatever it is you're doing to, term, to get the data you need to get, then it's like, I know, I, that's the most powerful position you can be in. Apple knows how much they need to pay, Microsoft, they all know, that's the secret. They know how much a customer is worth, period. That's the secret of business, is how much is a customer worth to me and how much does it cost to get them? That's it. If you know those two things, which most people do not know, Okay, because that's when they'll give up. They're paying 50 bucks for a Facebook ad and it didn't work, and they're like, screw it. 
Meanwhile, because I do this all every day. I talk to people who are coaches and shit. I'm going, so your Facebook ad failed. Yeah, I spent a hundred bucks this, this, this uh, week. Didn't work. How much is a customer worth? Well, it's a thousand dollar customer. Uh, so you just spent a hundred dollars and didn't work. Or let me opposite. They just spent a hundred, which is like a cost per acquisition, cost per lead. Let's say is, let's say $10 a lead. Oh, I got 10 leads, cost me $10, it cost me 100 bucks. How many people bought? One. So they're looking at the $10 and they're looking at the one. And I'm going, how much did you make? A thousand. So you made $900 profit on, 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 on $100 and you've got nine other people sitting in the funnel that you could, that you could market to. Sure. Well, yeah, I never looked at it that way. Well, dude, start looking at it, right? Because all you're looking at is, a, well, this shouldn't cost me $10 a lead because everybody else gets it for 10 cents. You're not everybody else, and they're selling like an ebook or something. You follow? This is where people get so caught up in the in the number thing. I'm going, dude. I go, would you do it again? Would you spend another hundred dollars if you got another guy for a thousand? Well, yeah. Well, then spend more money. Put two hundred in, and you get two thousand dollars. So if the value of a customer is say ten thousand dollars. Yes. Should you be spending on these? That's up to you. There's no right or wrong answer. It's like, what are you willing to spend to get the customer? And I'm, I'm just using Facebook as an example. It could be anything. It could be, you know, having a seminar and you spend like a $5,000 seminar. It costs you $5,000, but you get one customer and he pays 10,000, right? And you got a hundred people in the room, but only one person bought for 10,000. That's a win. People will go, oh, the conversion rate sucked. It was only one person. You got a hundred people in the room that you can market to now, and one person paid you 10000 that paid for the room yeah. and paid for all these other people that are marketing that now you can market to? Uh, hello? Simple, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just wanted to give you my, my perspective on this, and that's kind of where my mind is at all the time. It's always about what, what's the real, the, the real numbers when we're looking at this, okay? So fill in, uh, I'm not going to tell you to do this now, but fill in the ultimate business plan statement. The business plan statement, you have it there, looks like, uh, no, Let's read that. So here's the business plan statement. Okay. Right? So it's, you know, by October 1st, I will have successfully created a machine that nets me $25,000, sorry, uh, uh, per day, per month, right, whatever it is for you, by doing the following. I will serve this market, you know, internet marketers who have a problem, blah, 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 I just told you. I will sell them this product, my coaching at membership at 297 I will sell them, I told you the price, I will sell no less than per day per average. I will attain this level of conversion consistently. So whatever my conversion is. And you can see it on the bottom, there's an example. By December 23rd, I'm not gonna read it to you, but that's what you would wanna do. So you would just fill out who's your market, what's your price, what's your product, uh, what's your you know, per day average, and your conversion. And then put it into a statement, and that is your ultimate business plan statement that you could follow through to get your customers. You guys <laughs> look confused. In the service side of my thing, I don't charge. So on price, I don't like that would be my only issue there. It's still price, it's still, you still make a commission. Oh, yeah. You're still gonna make 2,500 bucks or $2,000, let's say. My price is 2.5% or whatever it is. Well, you I'm make. gonna look at it based on the average mortgage. I'm going to right. go back over the last two years. I've got data there that I can look at and say, okay, here's my average mortgage over the last two years. That's what I'm averaging. Yep. Then I'm going to go, okay, that was what I was earning in an average commission at the bank. Now, going with broker stats, here's what the average commission is. So that, that number works out to be $2,900 per client or something. Then, okay. Yeah, then that, you, that, it's the same thing. That. Yeah, just adapt it. Okay? So this is really the identifying the right customers. There's question one, which is, Again, you don't have to do all this, I just wanted to present it to you. But who will benefit mostly from your stuff? And who do you want to attract? Because that's the second part of this. Whereas you can say, the people who are gonna benefit mostly, for me, I can say, well, it's, it's beginners, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. But then I'm going, well, who do I want to attract? That's the most powerful question. So you can help everybody, and who's gonna benefit from what you do, but it's who do you want? And that is the key.